Shocking revelation. Breach 6 is the key to finding treasure. The group gets updated with fresh information regarding the possible worth of Yamashita's gold and discusses a region of interest known as Breach 6 in this phase of the mission. They gather information using a drone equipped with a magnetometer and decide to begin digging in the vicinity of an anomaly that indicates the presence of a tunnel. In spite of the challenges presented by the unstable soil, they were able to create a reinforced steel shaft and locate a concrete slab, which may have been the beginning of a tunnel. As they are ready to break through the concrete and maybe unearth the long-lost treasure, their level of excitement continues to rise. They also think that Breach 6 is the key to finding treasure. The explorer John Casey and his crew are updated by the researcher Bingo Minerva with new information regarding the potential value of Yamashita's gold. Estimates suggest that there may still be treasure in the mountains that is worth tens of billions or maybe hundreds of billions of dollars. According to the findings of Bingo's inquiry, the treasure may not only consist of gold, but also of diamonds, gems, and coins that are hidden beneath burlap sacks and crates. Bingo's investigation found that these items may be found among the treasure. Another topic that is brought up for discussion among the squad is Breach 6, which was an area of interest that Colonel Corey and his crew had previously examined. The fact that there are scary stories about previous treasure hunters becoming ill or dying in the area adds to the dangers that are linked with going there. The group has come to the opinion that the best approach to evaluate the issue is to send out a drone equipped with a magnetometer to gather information and discover a dig site that is both safe and accurate. This conclusion was reached after the group came to the conclusion that the best way to analyze the issue was to send out a drone equipped with a magnetometer. The team conducting the research finds three anomalies in the area, and they believe those anomalies hint to the existence of a tunnel. They are confident that they are sitting on top of a significant discovery, and as a result, they choose to conduct their excavation in the region that is immediately adjacent to the more significant anomaly. However, they experience difficulties as a result of the unstable soil, which ultimately results in the construction of a reinforced steel shaft for the purposes of safety. In the course of their exploration of the building, they came across a concrete slab that might or might not have been a component of a Japanese tunnel. During World War II, the Japanese made use of a cement mix that bore a striking resemblance to the formula that is applied in modern construction. Their level of excitement keeps rising as they get set to burst through the concrete and possibly find the long-lost treasure. They have been looking for it for a long time. After finishing all of the required steps, the party went into a corner and tried to get into the area where the treasure was hidden. They are really ecstatic because they believe that they may have found the entrance to a tunnel that had been concealed below the concrete covering. They have grounds for believing that they are coming closer to figuring out how to get into the mountain in order to retrieve the gold that was misplaced there. Lost Gold of World War II is an attempt to discover Yamashita's treasure 70 years after it was buried, based on trustworthy evidence from an eyewitness. While some mysteries have remained unsolved for a reason, such as a lack of credible information or an excessive reliance on tall tales, other mysteries have remained unanswered for a cause. The action takes place primarily on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, which serves as the backdrop for this exotic setting. During World War II, Japanese forces operating in Southeast Asia pillaged the region, stealing gold, ancient artifacts, and other valuables. After the United States prevented General Yamashita from returning to Japan in 1945, he purportedly buried all of the treasure in the Philippines after being prevented from returning to Japan. Following the conclusion of the war, he was put on trial in court and promptly executed, taking his long-hidden secret with him to the grave. After waiting for seven decades, two treasure seekers have formed a partnership in order to investigate the alleged location of 175 treasure sites across the Philippines. Together with a group of four other investigators, Peter Struzieri, who has a combined experience of 50 years in the treasure hunting industry, and John Casey serve as team leaders for this project. Their mission is to uncover the truth. Grandpa has consented to aid this party of Americans, who are being followed by a video team, despite the fact that he is somewhat hazy on everything he truly knows and that he was compelled to help the Japanese when he was a child. 
Lost gold is not as simple as just following urban legends into the woods. There is more to it than that. Five individuals make up the crew that is on the hunt for buried treasure. Heavy equipment operators Brad Carr and Jeremy McMillian, a team physician by the name of Manny Piaz, and an expert in symbols and codes by the name of Martin Flagg. In order to ensure the safety of the treasure vaults, General Yamashita set off a series of dynamite explosions. This introduces an additional element of danger into the equation. As a direct consequence of this, a great number of engineers and prisoners of war lost their lives in the process. After the treasure had been hidden, General Yamashita put it under a mountain in order to cover up practically all of the evidence. He did this so that no one would ever find it. Have I mentioned that there are also gas-filled booby traps placed up so that no one can claim their loot? This is one of the key hooks in the pilot, which focuses on a previous hole, Breach 6, that was constructed by earlier treasure hunters seeking for a tunnel, but was left empty. The hole was left unfilled so that the treasure hunters could continue their search. It is reported that every hunter who came before them became ill, most likely because to the poison that the Japanese left behind for the other hunters. What can we say but that there are several layers of suspense? Throughout the course of the show, a number of strange symbols are discovered carved into a variety of rocks. It is supposed that these emblems were left behind for the Golden Lily, a secret establishment of Japanese nobility that may have initially claimed the jewels for themselves. Using the equipment that is available, the group makes the discovery that there may be a cyanide canister that has been broken at the bottom of the 25-foot pit. They do this by climbing into their big machinery and operating it in order to expel any potentially contaminated gas. After Yamashita and his soldiers had left, the mountains had transformed, and for the past 80 years, there have been only a few hints left behind by the people who hid the treasure in the highlands. One of them has a pyramidal structure and hard imprints on the hand, which are both things that cannot be formed by nature and can only be made by humans. The pyramidal structure may be able to direct the team to the tunnels that Yamashita's men constructed. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notification for more interesting findings about this treasure. Breach 6 is the product of the labor put in by those who excavated for this treasure in the past. Up until the current day, a number of teams have been searching for gold and artifacts. Breach the 6th of May provide leads and clues, but it also may provide risks because some of the Yamashita army may have abandoned their traps. A shard of the shattered glass bottle may be seen on the screen of one of the team's cameras in Breach 6. It is assumed to be a bottle of cyanide due to the fact that Japanese soldiers are believed to have left it for allied forces to use as poison as they searched for gold. Is this bottle supposed to represent one of the many booby traps that would eventually lead the team to the treasure? Imelda Marcos asserted, without providing any evidence to support her assertion, in 1992, that the majority of Ferdinand Marcos's fortune came from Yamashita's gold holdings. The search for treasure places is being carried out by a large number of individuals and groups from both the Philippines and other countries. It has been alleged that treasure hunters have been responsible for a number of accidental fatalities, injuries, and financial losses. Research team finally makes breakthrough in treasure discovery. Click on the next video to find out more now.